So here it is. What can you do about the Trumpers next door? I'm quoting now. Oh, heck no. The Trumpites next door to our pandemic getaway, who seemed as devoted to the ex-president as you can get without being Q fans, just plowed our driveway without being asked. And they did a great job. How am I going to resist demands for unity in the face of this act of aggressive niceness? Now you're thinking, hmm. Okay, that's a joke. Right. Of course, on some level, I realize I owe them thanks. And man, it really looks like the guy backdragged the driveway like a pro. I mean, but how much thanks? I'm still quoting. These neighbors are staunch partisans of blue lives. How oh, dare Oh, they. my gosh. Of police officers? Yeah. Oh, my. That's what they do. Oh, That's what wow. they do. They believe in... They support them? Yes, they do. Oh, um, They do. They do. Mm. And there aren't a lot of anything other than white lives in the neighborhood. Oh, well, are you white? Because, I mean, you moved in. So if you moved in and you're not white... Well, mm, they didn't seem to have some sort of a process to keep people like you out, now did they? If you are white, that's your problem. Why didn't you buy that and give that to a minority? Or why didn't you not buy that and go find some place that was more diverse? This is also kind of weird. Back in the city, people don't sweep other people's walkways for anything. Hezbollah. The Shiite Islamic political party in Lebanon also gives away things for free. Okay. Yeah, they're just like Hezbollah. So we, we've, mm. we've, we've gone from they plowed my driveway to I think they're members of Hezbollah. <laughs> the favors Hezbollah does for people in the cities probably don't involve snow plows. But like other mafias, so now Trumpites are Hezbollah and a mafia. Hezbollah tends to its own, the Shiite sick, elderly, and hungry. They offer protection and hospitality and win loyalty that way. They also demand devotion to their brutal us-versus-them anti-Sunni cause. Some of us are family, the favors say. The rest are infidels. I think when the guy was putting on the snow plow to, to plow out your driveway, I think that's what he was thinking. Uh-huh. We're family. Yeah. Up here, up here in the mountains in a getaway. With family, and I'm going to plow this driveway. And next, I expect you to kneel down to a giant golden statue of Donald Trump as we slit the throat of babies. The same is true to Louis Farrakhan. Okay, so now it's uh, political um, uh, Hezbollah, mafia, and Louis Farrakhan. Louis Farrakhan, who currently helms the Nation of Islam. While the Southern Poverty Law Center classifies him as a dangerous anti-Semite. By the way, the Southern Poverty Law Center is a pile of crap. It mm -hmm. is an agenda organization run by the left. But they define him as a dan dangerous anti-Semite. Much of his flock says he's just a little screwy and unfailingly generous to them. Okay. When some again, if you just joined us, I'm reading from a serious op-ed in the Los Angeles Times. When someone helps you when you're down or snowed in, it's almost impossible to regra regard them as a plight on the world. In fact, you're more likely to be overwhelmed with gratitude and convinced of the person's inherent goodness. You might end up like the upper middle class family I stayed with in France as a teenager. They didn't attend a citywide celebration for the 100th birthday of Charles de Gaulle, the war hero who orchestrated the liberation of his country from Nazi Germany in 1944. They did have several portraits of a Nazi collabor uh, collaborator on their wall. When I screwed up and found the uh, courage to ask, how was it during the occupation for you? The lady of the house replied, we were happy because the Nazis were very polite i was in tears i bet i bet uh i mean here you are staying at a yet another white family's house uh and they turn out to be nazi collaborators <laughs> but i'm trying to figure out exactly what that story has to do 
uh, with the guy who just plowed your driveway as if it wasn't offensive enough that you that you call him in a public space. The guy, I mean, if he reads the L.A. Times, you don't think he's going to know I'm probably the guy who was plowing the driveway? This is your thank you? You called me a mob member, a member of Hezbollah, or a Nazi collaborator? Wow. <laughs> okay. All from plowing the driveway. Plowing the neighbor's mm-hmm. driveway. Yeah, dri- without being asked. So when I accept generosity from my pandemic neighbors, acknowledging the legitimate kindness with a wave or a plate of cookies, am I also sealing us in as fellow travelers who are very polite to each other, but not so much to them? Loving your neighbor is evidently much easier when your neighborhood is full of of people just like you. You think maybe that's why you get along with everybody where you live in Los Angeles. Maybe that's why you can't find a conservative at all in New York City because you all just congregate and you all think that you're right and there's no room for anybody else's opinion and so you just brutalize them. You know, because in that scenario, we're the them. My neighbors supported a man who showed near murderous contempt for the majority of Americans. My neighbors supported a man who showed near murderous contempt for the majority of Americans. Okay, what are you doing? You, you're, you're taking half of the country because they supported Trump, and you're saying they're Hezbollah terrorists, mafia members, or Nazi collaborators. Well, gee, I can understand because I wouldn't want to bring a piece of pie to one of those guys. Don't you understand? That's exactly what you're doing. You have almost a murderous contempt for half the country. They kept him in business with their support. But the plowing... On January 6th, after the insurrection, Senator Ben Sass issued an aw shucks plea for all Americans to love their neighbors. The United States, he said, isn't the Hatfields and McCoys, this blood feud forever. And he added, you can't hate someone who shovels your driveway. At the time, I seethed. Why? I got really great advice from somebody last week. I said, uh, going go to family therapy uh, for, oh, I don't know, a thousand reasons. Mm, most of them, uh, is coincidentally, have the name of my children attached to it. But uh, so I go, I go to the, the therapist and he said, listen, here's what I want you to do. I want you to, I want you to ask, okay, so what, how, how did you get there? And I said, okay, and then they'll say this, and then they'll say this, and then they'll say this, and then I just want to punch him in the face. And he said, well, the punching in the face thing, and I said, I'm kidding. And he said, yeah, I know. I'm writing it down, though, too. Soon the government will have access to these. Um, He said, I want you to, whenever you find yourself getting really upset, stop. He said, because that's you. That's not them. That's you. And you're upset because of something you believe or something that you think, and it's a challenge to you. And this is the way we all feel. We feel as though our country is going away, and no one's doing anything about it, and our rights are about to be lost. And so, yeah, I get a little tense. But if they're not feeling that, and you are, You are not going to be able to even listen to them once you start feeling that way. He's like, you have to get control of what's inside of you and separate that when you're in these conversations. That's really good advice. Mm -hmm. Really good advice. So he says at the time of the Capitol, I seethed. That's in you, man. That's in you. And it was in me, too. Because I felt these people were taking away our country. Now, what's weird is I felt that way during the riots all summer long. So 
I'm consistent. You're not. You should ask why you seethed then and didn't seethe uh, seethe, uh, a few months ago. He said, I see the Capitol had just been desecrated, but maybe my neighbor heard sass and was determined to make a bid for reconciliation. Maybe your neighbor didn't like that. Maybe, have you thought of that? Your neighbor didn't like that. Because if your neighbor was a Trump supporter, I know a lot of Trump supporters. In fact, I know a majority of Trump supporters were like, that's not cool. Stop that. I know I was really angry. I seethed. And why was I really angry if I have to examine that? Because I knew dopes like you would classify everybody on the right as somebody who backed that. And gee, guess who's right again? So here's my response to my plowed driveway for now. Politely, but not profusely, I'll acknowledge his kindness with a wave and a thanks, a minimal start on building back trust. No, notice that person next door has to build up this guy's trust. You, you, mm-hmm. the, the, the Trump supporter has all the work to do. <clears throat> you just have to tolerate them. Do you ever think that maybe the trust goes both ways? The lack of trust is going both ways? You ever think, see, this is what kills me. And, and I am guilty of this myself. I have adopted a new phrase in my life. And I've got a few of them. Question with boldness, the very existence of God. For if there be a God, he must surely rather honest questioning over blindfolded fear. The other, uh, there are many things I believe that I shall never say, but I shall never say the things I do not believe. And the third one I just forgot. Don't forget, hire the vet. That's it. That one? Yeah. <laughs> Jeez, I, thought, I just forgot I this so. one. Yeah. It's, uh, oh, well, it's this. It's this. The only <laughs> thing I'm certain of is that I'm not certain of anything. That's it. If we could just adopt that, the world would be a much different place because everyone is certain of the truth. Everyone. Marjorie Taylor Greene was certain that Q was real. Well, no. Now, did she really change her mind or not? I don't know. AOC is certain her point of view is the right way to go. We have to stop being certain of things. Because honestly, tell me, you don't trust anything, right? I don't. So what could you possibly be certain of? Instead of just tolerating I'm not ready, I'm quoting the article, I'm not ready to knock on the door with a covered dish yet. Maybe you should. Maybe you should. Maybe you should go to them and say, you know what? My turn. My turn. And it's not just bringing you a covered dish. Could you come over for dinner? Because I just, I just want to get to know you. How? How? You were a supporter. Don't try to be right. Don't try to win. Just try to understand, and I will bet you that you will find a lot of common ground. And it's going to be hard, because I know it would be almost impossible for me. I might have to get up from a dinner with you, the author of this article. I would probably, I would probably just, just say, I've got bad diarrhea. i got to get up from dinner about every five minutes. I'm sorry. I don't mean to be rude. Just to go out and breathe. But I'd be willing to do it. And I'd be willing to listen and not try to win or not make a list of things. Yeah, but then you. But how many people are willing to do that? Very few. Very few. And that stops us from actually seeing the things that we do agree on. Oh, wait a minute. You know, you were telling me the other day, you, you were really upset about this. Did you read this story about this? 
If you're talking to somebody who's willing to go down that journey with you, I can guarantee you they didn't know that story. Because I've done this with many friends. They don't read that. We read much of their stuff. They read none of ours. Patience, deep breaths, and stop being certain that you are right. Right. 